In the previous video, I was talking about uh, this block diagram, this reference block diagram uh, described by Keith Barr in his uh, uh, knowledge base to the spin semiconductor project. Mm, and I was talking about that we can realize it as a, as a kind of vertical structure with the feedback. I mean, like uh, we could make this block diagram to be to look like uh, from top to bottom, yeah. But we could also take every one of these structures and place them to a parallel delay lines, and then uh, make the connection between those delay lines on feedback so that the first delay line output would go to the second one, and the second output of the second delay line would go to third one and so on and the last delay uh, line would feed back to the first delay line yeah and this would give the same result <coughs> uh, and this would give the same result yeah so let's take a look at those those these two examples and these two examples uh, the first one is the old one th from the previous video uh, and can be found with the uh, in the corresponding uh, file with the source code on a github um, and another one is present here uh, and is realized as the as a feedback delay network uh, with the circular matrix let's take a look at how they sound first one is the old old one yeah yeah and the second one is a is an FDN. Yeah, the same things are the same, aren't they? Yeah, are the same. So you can hear. Yeah, it, it sounds the same. Uh, we can tweak the the uh, channels, uh, the output like yeah, output signals uh, and other parameters. It will be basically the same thing. Now. What actually I did here, let's take this example and explain what is the FDN, what is the feedback delay network, how it works, how we can make that thing. So, <coughs> okay. Um, the difference, <coughs> the difference between uh, the previous design uh, which was this array, yeah, in which, as you could see, the local in, the output from the local in unit generator was reassigned every time, and on the next iteration, the local in variable would contain the result of the previous iteration, yeah, and then that last element of this array that is formed by this collect mm, loop would go to the feedback. <coughs> now here I uh, have a four channel local in it's not one channel as it was previously so uh, with this loop now I reassign on every iteration only the local in at I yeah local in at I so um, I take the signal on every iteration I take the signal from this uh, delay line output corresponding it is one four channels here yeah, and it will return an array of four elements I take the eth ith element and reassign it only inside the certain the corresponding iteration and on the feedback to the feedback I send the tank as uh, the tank variable which holds an array as it's formed here as it is yeah but there is another thing that I do on a feedback which is the, this uh, collect loop which holds another collect loop but actually can also be simply uh, expressed as the two arrays multiplication let's let's take a closer look <laughs> let's take a closer look so the m m m where is that m 
yeah, this M is a what would be called a well rotated uh, matrix. Yeah, the, the circular matrix is. I'm not mistaken. It's called like that. Uh, uh, <coughs> so it holds four arrays. Yeah, four arrays. And with this operation, let's put it like this near the thing. Oh, okay. What's wrong? I copied it. Okay. I paste it. Beautiful. <coughs> so what it does, it takes this array on the first iteration, it takes this array and multiplies it by, let's say this is for an example, this is the output of local in, yeah? It has the signals from that come from local out, yeah? And uh, it's a four element array. So we take the first one of it and multiply it by um, the first element of the first array, yeah? Second by the second, third by the third, fourth by the fourth. Yeah, we multiply those two arrays, and then we sum them, we sum them to one value. Yeah, but basically that would be four signals. From each one of these comes the signal. Yeah, so four signals uh, superpositioned one on another or, or summed with each other, and this result, this signal, resulting signal, will go to the input of the first delay line of the first delay line <coughs> yeah so as a result we will have this sum and this will be the first element of this local in variable which will hold an array as a result yeah with the second we do the same thing with the second array we take this thing multiply everyone by each, by each other and uh, sum them and that will go to the second delay line. Third delay line, same thing. Fourth delay line, the same thing. Okay. <coughs> so we can interpret, uh, for example, this, let's take as an example, this first array. All of its elements specify like how much of the corresponding delay line output will go to the first delay line yeah and here we specify how much will go to the second so in another words this will take zero of the first delay line nothing from the second delay line nothing from the third delay line and all of it from the fourth delay line yeah so the last delay line would go to the first delay line L output of the last delay line the fourth one will go to the first one for the second, we get the output of the first delay line, yeah? And so on. <coughs> and vertically, it can be interpreted as um, how much this first delay line will be feeded to all other delay lines, yeah? Okay, I hope this is clear. Um, <coughs> so the key operation is this. Key procedure is this to form a feedback delay network and this method is good to, to be used by scientists to prototype and describe uh, different systems as you can see now I just took this system and uh, made a certain algorithm that we discussed previously and basically uh, all of the algorithms before well I actually explained only two yeah but all of them can be expressed and lots of other uh, reverberators can be expressed with this approach yeah and another thing about it that it's good on paper it looks good on paper <laughs> or to be more precise um, it lines up well with linear algebra methods for example this multiplication as I just said uh, expressed it is a basic uh, operation in linear algebra it's matrix by vertical vector multiplication
Yeah. Uh, we can take a look at, uh, for example, this Octave code. And Octave is a language for mathematical uh, programming. Um, here you can see I generate a so-called Hadamard matrix, 4x4. Uh, and then a <coughs> vector, which is 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I do this procedure. And it's just m multiplied by x, yeah, m by x. And we get this result. Uh, the same thing will happen if we take uh, the super collider and do a aforementioned action with this matrix. Now let's, what we've seen here, yeah, this thing, this is the same thing. And we get this 14 minus 2 minus 4 and 0, yeah. Okay. Another thing, uh, since I mentioned that it, it looks good on, on paper, <laughs> is that it's good to prototype something. It's good to prototype. But you can see that actually this is not an effective solution. The previous one was better because it used less uh, multiplications uh, and additions and so on. We see that most of the elements of this uh, matrix are zeros. And what's the sense of multiplying our signals by zeros without any effect? It would become more efficient without uh, this matrix multiplication. We could just take this tank and do a tank dot rotate, which would return like uh, the, this array in this order. Yeah. So, <coughs> while being good for prototyping something, it's usually a common thing after you came up with some design to remove everything extra and in particular thing with this one i wouldn't use it as that i would just do it more effectively yeah? matrix by vector multiplication by the way uh, this is uh, one of the fundamental uh, procedures also in a dsp uh, in dsp for example if we would treat this thing this vector not as uh, delay line outputs uh, but um, like a time domain signal, a, a fixed the signal in which uh, this would be the first sample, this would be the second, third and fourth, yeah, and so on. It would probably be a rather big one. Uh, and take this circular matrix, circular matrix, yeah. This would be a, a time domain correlation calculation. Yeah, the same procedure. Um, and convolution as well. Well, conv the difference between correlation and convolution is that this would become an impulse response. Yeah, this would be called a kernel convolution kernel, the impulse response. Um, and we have this impulse response kind of rotated at every uh, every new row. Yeah. So uh, by reading it backwards, we would get convolution. Um, so. Just like a little note, since since we got to this algorithm, why not explaining how it um, works with the procedures that I refer to a lot in these videos, correlation and convolution. <coughs> and since I started on that, the if we will take the spectrums of these two guys, like let's say this is an impulse response, yeah, and this is a signal, uh, we would take spectrum of this one and spectrum of this one and then in a frequency domain uh, we would multiply their spectrums we would get the same result yeah it's kind of equivalent yeah convolution and in time domain and multiplication and uh, frequency domain and that's why usually correlation for example i guess this one this one that that is shown with this program is done in a frequency, uh, sorry, yeah, in, fre in spectrum domain, fre frequency domain, frequency domain, okay. For longer signals, it's more effective to do that in a frequency domain by spectrum multiplication. But for smaller ones, it, it, it would be faster to do it just as it is, uh, with some optimization for matrix vector multiplication, uh, so-called vectorization. Uh, okay enough with that so now that we know about the key uh, procedure 
with FDN. Let's take an example which would actually be effective and would take this um, <coughs> uh, feedback, this matrix, matrix multiplication within an FDN to its full potential. Yeah. Uh, you can see here, this is a Hadamard matrix of order 2, the same one that I mentioned here, but here it's uh, order 4. Uh, for FDN, usually what is used uh, the, are the matrices of order of powers of 2, yeah? And to construct the next uh, order, the next power of 2 order of these matrices, we can take the 2 power of 1 matrix and uh, make a so-called recursive embedding, uh, which is we take this procedure we take this construction this matrix put it one two three four yeah and at every this embedding we multiply the every next one by by the corresponding values of this matrix so here we see the copy of it yeah another copy another copy and here with uh, inverted signs, yeah, because it's multiplied by, by minus one. The next power of two uh, order for the matrix is constructed by taking the previous power, power of two, yeah, and again repeating the same procedure uh, by multiplying again every this structure by corresponding element of this one of this matrix and so goes for the next one uh, now <coughs> let's take this 8 by 8 matrix and uh, construct an FDN which was presented in this very beautiful uh, chapter in this book called Applications of Digital Signal Processing to Audio and Acoustics. This was um, uh, written or written, written by um, William Gardner, whom I mentioned in a previous video, uh, and probably is one of the best uh, surveys on digital reverberation for the time in which it was published. It was published in 1998, 1998. Yeah. So this is the uh, block diagram that was proposed by Jean-Marc Jot. And uh, you can see here also a chain, uh, the surname of other researcher. Uh, but there are also some other works that only attributed to Jean-Marc Jot, so I think it's uh, it, it's it will be right to say that it was proposed by Jean-Marc Jot. Uh, so there are uh, other papers as well by him in which he talks about this structure. What we see here is the feedback delay network in which the input signal is taken to the input of every delay line. Uh, before that, it might be multiplied by some coefficients, but uh, that depends on the context. Usually, probably, there is no need for that. <coughs> mm, so we have a copy of the signal that goes to every uh, delay line. Then it's delayed. This is a delay by one step, one step, by minus, by, this is a delay by M samples. Yeah, so we have M1, M2, and so on different uh, variables that hold the number of samples to delay by. Then we have a filter, which might be a one pole filter or some or shelf shelving filter or something else. And then after the filtering, the signal goes back to the feedback. And then the procedure that we just uh, looked at. After that, the signal might be mu multiplied by some coefficients get summed and goes to equalizer the correction filter so-called co correction filter yeah then we have a sum with the direct sound 
and that goes to output. This is a monophonic uh, one channel reverberator. Yeah, and uh, multi channel reverberators uh, are to be created by having corresponding structures for every channel. For every channel, basically, in a simple case, they will just have a uh, different uh, delay line lengths. Yeah, or delay times for the for, for the delay lines. That's it. Let's take a look at the implementation. Did I? Oh yeah, I did. So uh, let's start with the simple structure. Let's start without those filters, without this, and with just an impulse that is fed to the FTN. We have a feedback delay line network with the matrix Hadamard matrix of size 8 by 8 yeah order of 8 okay yeah let's put this like that huh? okay this will be clear as you can see One impulse at the input of this structure gave us a kind of white noise at the output. It was a white noise in which we could uh, hear some periodicities, yeah? But still, the spectrum is uniform. <coughs> uh, this is possible with the matrices like this one, Hadamard matrix, for example, mm, because of their specific qualities. Usually, well, in, in linear algebra, they are called uh, unitary matrices. And basically, everything we need to know about that, if we are not to dive into uh, linear algebra and uh, mm, agent vectors, agent functions, or, say, the agent values, <laughs> and um, uh, matrices with uh, complex elements and so on basically they allow our feedback to take its full potential in exchanging all the uh, uh, outputs with all the inputs uh, and create what is called a lossless prototype yeah why do we need that this allows us to get a very fast build up uh, of echo density yeah echo density this is the fundamental thing and w with this uh, video I hope I think we should uh, close this question and uh, get an answer to how can we get rid of that metallic sound yeah <coughs> so the modal density the correlate of the modal density is calculated as a sum of all the delay times, all the delay line lengths, yeah, in seconds. So basically, this will give us give us this value. The rule that was proposed by Manfred Schroeder, the pioneer of digital reverberation, was to have it at least now 0.15 of reverberation time, yeah. I would say that this still would have a metallic quality. Uh, so in later works, <coughs> 0 0.25, 0 0.3 was proposed. Yeah, but in my uh, opinion, having it at least one second, at least one second. Not not only my. I I've read that by the way, if I'm not mistaken, from William Gardner's work. One second is good. Uh, to have as a, uh, what is that? As a safe, safe solution. One second. Let's take a look at how much we have now. 0 0.7, yeah? 0 0.7. Let's make it one second. We still see, hear some periods. I, I hear at least. Uh, I, I think you as well, but, well, YouTube has some processing here yeah, of the audio, so but it, it shouldn't be. By the way, the quality of YouTube, that HQ audio, is probably the best ones of those that I 
you've heard, but sometimes it might do some nasty things with some versions of the video. It creates several videos here for, for the one you upload. So let's increase that thing. Now we have more than second, point 0.23. And now those, uh, those uh, periodicities are, are not that obvious. But the thing is, with increasing the delay times, we increase the um, virtual uh, space that we try to emulate. Yeah, we increase its size. What we will hear when we will put a real live signal through that, it's a big space. But what if I want to create not that big room, and uh, I don't want it to sound metallic? The solution is to increase the number of delay times. Yeah number of delay time values yeah or in other words take a bigger uh, matrix take a bigger matrix so now <coughs> we will have <coughs> same uh, sum of the delay lines but with smaller values for the delay times but bigger number of it of them You see, the build-up of echo density is almost instant now, yeah, and the uh, uh, delay times sum is almost as it was uh, with the previous eight uh, by eight matrix. So this gives us that metal-free, <laughs> metal-free, metal-free sound. Uh, metal, metal free impulse response, <laughs> metal free reverberation. Okay. Uh, now that we have this lossless prototype, what we should do is to control the decay time, yeah, control the reverberation time. And Jean Marc Jode uh, mentions that it's not a good idea to just put uh, some coefficient by which we would multiply uh, every delay line. Uh, what is better is to compute the reverberation time uh, with this formula, which is basically how all of the all pass and comp filters in Super Collider calculate their uh, delay times. It's just the same formula that I, that I mentioned uh, previously in the previous videos. And what it, what this will give us is that for the different delay times, for different delay times, we would have the same length of the impulse response. Yeah, because what we specify with this formula, this, uh, for example, this point point one, is tailored so that is the number that will give us uh, um, the time, the, the coefficient. Yeah, okay. Mm, this will allow us, let me formulate it like that. This will allow us to basically specify with this RT, which is the control signal here, specify how much time will it take for the impulse response to die out by 60 decibels. The parameter in acoustics, this parameter is called RT60 for that reason. 60 decibels. So, with this, every delay line will return the same length impulse response, yeah, and no one of them will dominate over others. So, the spectrum will be more uniform, yeah, more uniform. Okay, will remain uniform. And this is the corresponding resulting impulse response. It's mono. I just saw, I, I just duplicate this channel so that it would be uh, would come from two speakers. Uh, okay, where is that? Here it is. Jot mono. Okay. No, it's not it. It's a different. No, 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 no. Yeah, my bad. So now let's put that thing to something bigger than zero. Let's say four, one over three. Yeah.
One second delay time. Vibration time. Yeah. Two seconds. Three seconds. Yeah. Two from uh, one point five to three seconds is the usual range for uh, concert halls. For the concert halls. Okay. <coughs> Now, now that we have this reverberation time specified, we can use another property of this uh, control and all this formula. And is that you can see with the mm, you can see with the increase of reverberation time, the signal becomes louder. Yeah, with the smaller reverberation time, it becomes quieter. So now with this formula, if we take a square root of uh, reverberation time and uh, uh, take one over the square root of the reverberation time uh, so we get basically this oh sorry 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 wrong act okay yeah more or less same loudness and now that we have this uh, reverberation time control with the lossless prototype, we can introduce the frequency dependent loss by the mm, use of uh, Wample filter or shelv shelving filters. Shelving filters are very good. Uh, why? Because they are very intuitive. But the shelving filter uh, should be, and Jean Marc Jord talks about that by the way not in this paper but in the later ones uh, should be uh, what is the term forgot the term uh, uh, and shelving filter should have the same frequency response curve irregardless of whether it boosts or cuts the kind of the the shape of the frequency response should have kind of mirrored uh, uh, form yeah yeah okay mirrored form okay let's go like that so why why is it important it's important because um, Jean-Marc Jod wants to use a correction filter here yeah what this correction filter uh, does is basically it compensates for the first run of the impulse through this feedback delay network yeah for that it's a good thing to have it kind of um, equalize it so that the beginning of the impulse response uh, will be untouched uh, by the so th these filters which are called by the way absorbing filters yeah so they're absorptive absorptive filters they they're here to simulate the air uh, air and uh, obstacle absorption of usually of the high frequency energy basically that's it we have the reverberator uh, this is monophonic one so for a multi-channel system we would just take this structure this uh, synth and uh, for example send the delay times for it uh, using this this method d times ar this is the symbol this would make it a control signal. I use this mm, approach a lot, as you can see. And in particular, this approach is good uh, if you want to specify an array of initial values. And uh, if we want to generate an array of uh, prime numbers, as you can see in all those examples, I use um, delay time and samples just because I use prime numbers. That That's, that's why. Um, then for any random value that we generate here, we can take the next prime. This is a method for integer. So if you calculate it, uh, make sure that you result with the integer, not the float. Or if if it's a float, then use as integer or in integer uh, integer here. Yeah. Uh, the next prime will return the nearest uh, prime number. Okay. So what do we have? This is a shelving filter. We have, let's make a bigger delay time, decay time, bigger decay time. And, uh, okay.
and the gear. With this shelf filter, high shelf from Super Collider, the lower, the um, more gentle will be the curve. Yeah, the higher the value, uh, like around two, it will create resonances. So not 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 always safe, safe thing to use. Let's probably try it with some live signals. Yeah. Okay. This is our beloved drum loop, although we have a bit uh, bigger set of inputs. Now, okay, this will take an input uh, from a channel zero, from this one, yeah, and copy it to all the delay lines. So as you can see, <coughs> now we can make a rather small room uh, with a high density, high echo density, and it will not sound that uh, metallic as uh, uh, previous uh, versions of the uh, previous reverberation algorithms would do. And more than that, it doesn't say that it should be only um, it should be only this. Yeah, we can actually add the uh, all pass filters inside of the feedback we can add those nested all pass filters that i explained in a previous video so there are lots of ways in which we can play with that further this is one of the approaches with the feedback delay network yeah so we create a uh, monophonic reverberation uh, taking this approach to its full potential to create uh, echo density but it also can be used also can be used in the same manner as as i as i did with this guy with this first one trying to simulate what uh, was done with the, that lss style reverberation this will result in the same this this one will have same features that depending on the on at which channel we send the signal we will get a decorrelated impulse response yeah so what i do here i don't pass this signal to every delay line yeah i only pass it to the certain to, to the one that i connected it to here here yeah i only pass it for example to the first one or to the third one and so on and in this case this starts to make sense for me, at least. Without it, I don't, I don't quite get an idea of like why, why would we need that, and I don't get an explanation about it that much. Probably I should read this paper, uh, but I couldn't find it. I found some others uh, by Jean-Marc Jot, and that's why I usually ma mention Jot and don't mention uh, other researchers because that's from whom I took that information. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, what else what else what else what else yeah uh, for the outputs let, let's run this thing let's run this thing yeah this is how I use it here so now I send the signal now I send the signal to only first channel yeah let's try to the second one first one again I hope you can uh, detect <laughs> with the hearing mechanism <laughs> I hope you can detect 
uh, like uh, the differences between the uh, between the signals coming uh, the, this one and this one yeah uh, because it's not easy the more elements this uh, matrix will have the more the, the closer will become the outputs sent to uh, different inputs yeah but they still will be different and will be delayed differently and so on because let's take them You can hear that different combinations uh, create uh, now a different sound image. Yeah. If, for example, we don't take a Hadamard and take something else, I don't know. We take this Hadamard and make some of the values a bit smaller. Yeah. This will make this structure not a lossless prototype, but it will exaggerate the differences of the impulse responses that will result from different input signals on different inputs. Okay. <coughs> yeah, this is here in this manner, in this way, just so that it would be clean, like what I'm doing, how I cal calculate those values. Uh, actually, we get this thing. Yeah, we, we get this matrix of 0.25 values and it's better to put it just as it is here but this is just more 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 clear uh, so this design this feedback delay network design uh, is better if we want to create a more realistic uh, room impulse responses again this would require our uh, us to have a reflector as a separate structure we can with this stereophonic example we can feed the signal to the reverberator straight from the uh, reflectors yeah uh, and this will sound nice with this monophonic approach it's not a good idea uh, we should send the direct sound probably or one of the reflections well, but basically direct sound and then uh, delay that thing delay we have a pre-delay here basically but with this stereophonic variant we can do j just that and one of the examples of this uh, reverberations is uh, that there are very like this example is one of the earliest uh, papers uh, on FDN by Miller Packet and uh, John Stoutner they presented a four by four feedback delay network uh, in which signals could be fed to any of the delay lines and more than that they used panning between different inputs as you can see The sound image can be uh, changed this way very naturalistically. And then, which is uh, very interesting, they used every, they, they kind of treated every delay line as an obstacle in a real room. So they would calculate how much time would it take for a sound wave to travel from one obstacle to another obstacle and use that for the delay time. So they kind of modeled the room itself. Yeah. This is the thing that can be done with this uh, approach beautifully. So um, if you interested, this is a old paper from 70s, I guess. Uh, the first work on FDNs was done by Michael Gerzon, also a le legendary researcher in this area. He is the one who came up with the quadrophonics, then ambisonics, and feedback delay networks in particular. And um, Miller Pocket as well. So you, you can find this paper online. Just search for Miller Pocket John Stoutner FDN. So, the as I mentioned, yeah, the end result and algorithm would ins uh, include.
<coughs> would include a matrix, would include an FDN. Uh, if you want to do it like I did uh, with, with this stereo variant, yeah, uh, would include the feedback delay network reverberator for the late part of an impulse response. Uh, a reflector, this is the same as I used in a previous video. Oh, why, why did I do it two times? Okay. Uh, and uh, you could actually, that's how Jean Marc Jot describes it. You can just, just take a three dimensional spectrum of an existing impulse response existing impulse response, uh, then uh, analyze it, and then with shelving, shelving filter, for example, couple of shelving filters would be good, couple of them in, in a cascade, like low shelf, high shelf, that thing. Um, approximate the spectrum uh, with those filters, and this is the way you can get rather convincing uh, concert hall simulation for example yeah another one and probably easier approach is the one I mentioned in the first video which is uh, uh, convolution just convolution with the impulse response you can take an existing impulse response load it to a floats array in super collider then multiply it maybe by some array of small random values like random values around one uh, and get a version of it, yeah. You can rotate it with this method, like to uh, make an additional delay uh, to the values and so on. Like, play with that, create some new arrays, then load them to buffers, and then you can make your multi channel uh, version of a certain concert hall. Mm. That's the thing, that's the way. Uh, keep uh, an eye on. Uh, Cross-correlation. Cross-correlation should, uh, when you have a direct sound and early reflections uh, with the reverberation tail, all of them, the cross-correlation should be around 0.5 and should fluctuate. Yeah, This fluctuation, I told about that in the previous video, is important uh, to create a pleasing effect of uh, spaciousness. Yeah. Mm, also, early reflection, as I told about this already um, in the first uh, video, uh, creates a very important effect on a sound source and kind of naturalize it. Because most of the sound sources that we hear are in enclosed spaces. They always have some early uh, reflections. And without it, it sounds a bit artificial, but with it, it starts to speak naturalistically. So this is an impor important quality. And uh, <coughs> uh, how you specify the delays on uh, and how you filter the signals on the early part is important. It's a good thing to have uh, one delay, uh, one delay, then maybe a couple of all pass filters on one all, all pass filter for every early reflection tap. Yeah. Sometimes it's also good to have a high, high pass filter, but not always a natural thing to do. Uh, and of course the panning. Yeah. I guess I've done. I'm done with this uh, naturalistic reverberation with this video. Uh, with the next one, I think about <coughs> making a video on. Uh, granular reverberation, but I feel I'm kind of uh, a bit fixed on this reverberation thing. Uh, nevertheless, the, the the topic requires that all to be revealed, like this reverberation type, this because well, spatial processing is everything. Uh, it's uh, it's probably the most essential thing in sound design. <coughs> besides the sound source synthesis yeah uh, without space without spatial processing well the the absence of spaces is uh, more of an effect than the, the spatial processing um, in place 
Okay. So yeah, the next one is on uh, granular reverberation probably. But if you have some topics in mind, like what I should talk on, talk about, then drop some ideas, leave that in comments or however you want. But it's good probably to make it in comments so that these videos that I make would probably gain uh, some uh, more attention uh, for the people who uh, works with uh, this type of system so what wants to get some ideas on <coughs> uh, digital music making systems uh, leave some feedback that's uh, always good um, and bring some ideas on some constructive stuff uh, so I, I will take that make note of that and in the future videos will give attention to that uh, you you might see that this time uh, my videos have a bit uh, bigger gap uh, uh, between them I mean the last one was about a month no no not the last one I made these two in a row but before that it was about a month that's because I'm working on another project of mine now it requires some time yeah I have to finish it how to have to finish it. it that was a long time I didn't do that so let's listen to how it sounds with the same uh, algorithm that I used in a previous video uh, we have three wavetable synthesizers with the different wavetables yeah those are feeded to three reflectors and those reflectors feed the uh, feedback delay network now yeah this will so would sound like a more realistic not that big uh, uh, enclosed space but I always but I also uh, mo modify its characteristics in time which is not a realistic thing yet to do but I do that so that we would get uh, um, uh, a better idea on what type of sonorities can be created with this reverberator mm -hmm. 